Okay, so on the wrestling side of things, yeah, you guys must be getting hit up left, right, and center. I feel like when you guys in WWE parted ways, that was really a jaw dropper of like, what? How, how, what, why, where, when? Like it's, it blew my mind for sure. So what was the reaction for you guys from, from some other independent wrestling promotions and, you know, all of the opportunities that are available now? So basically what, what was the, the whole, how it played out was pan, the pandemic started. And at the time, like everyone was super, super uncertain about what was going on. You know, like mm-hmm. we didn't know, like if we want, cause I was living in Canada in Vancouver at the time. So I was oh, so flying back even, and forth. Oh, you were flying no, back and forth. I, at the time, but then the border shut. Right. Got it. So I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. And then, uh, Zim, Zim hadn't been home in, uh, I think two years at the time to Amsterdam and like he was worried about his own family because the whole world was getting shut down. People were getting sick left, right and center. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was just where, uh, but WWE had approached us with something different that they wanted us to do. And we were just like, Hey man, we just don't feel comfortable doing it. And at the time, like that was the best decision for us. And we decided to just stay with our families and stay home, you know? And to that was a, all to it be was. A little bit nosy. What was the thing that they had offered you? If you want to talk about it, you don't have to. But I, I rather, I rather not. It was something. Okay. It was something in the company, obviously. But okay. like at the time, the, if you remember, we were working with Seth. We we're working on top, and we yeah. had this huge storyline, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, but at the time that Zim had just gotten hurt, he tore his bicep in uh, one of the main events at Raw, and uh, he tore his bicep. Like that was, I think that was the last raw before the, all the restrictions went in, and then we went uh, without a crowd, I believe. And right. he just torn it, and uh, he the whole plan with the whole time was coming back and just doing what we were doing before, right? Mm-hmm. And what had happened was he came back after four months, and and the script had completely changed. And what they wanted us to do at the time, we weren't really comfortable doing, and we just said, you know, like and we're family men, you know, I'm an only child. I like taking care of my parents yeah. and Zim, Zim's, Zim's got a brother and sister, but at the same time, he likes taking care of his parents too. They're getting older. So I just said, you know what, this is good. I got to stay home and take care of my family. And Zim said, yeah. that's the best decision for me as well. And that, that was it. And then after that, we didn't even think about wrestling, you know, yeah. all the offers or what, what not. We're just, we sat back and we're just like, you know, we're just going to let this pandemic end. The pandemic never ended. You know what I mean? I know. You know, it I kept, know. It, it kept going, kept going. And then while we had all this free time, we started doing multiple different ventures. I got into housing and stuff like that, real, a lot of real estate stuff. And then Zim got his uh, uh, food prep companies and restaurants, and he's into all that stuff. And then uh, then we finally, like, when we talk all the time over the phone, and then we started uh, fiddling around with this NFT world. And then we came up with this. So then we got busy with this. So we never really had a chance to sit back and be like, hey, man, we should grab our gear bag. We just never did, you know, So because we're so busy with doing all this other stuff, and which has been nice. You know, it's been nice. So my question now, a year and a half off of no bumps, how good do your bodies feel right now? Do you feel, I feel amazing? amazing. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I look the I look the best. I feel the best. Yeah. I like we're both young. Like I, I was I was 20. When I'm I got not gonna lie. When I when I was prepping for this, I was like, "You guys are so young! Holy right? shit, yeah. babies!" Like, um, uh, I was 20 when I got signed. Zim was 19. We we're both young, and then now I'm 28. Zim's 27, and uh, we can still wrestle tomorrow if we wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we can go. But I honestly, I do feel a lot better not traveling and just not taking bumps. I bet. Gazim, tell me about your food trucks. I didn't know you had food trucks and you were into like no, restaurants food prep and stuff. Companies. A food prep yeah. company. Food oh. prep. I was food like, you have a food companies. truck? Bring it here. Yeah. Um, what, what, how did you get involved in that? Well, uh, obviously, every WWE wrestler almost eats a lot of meal preps. When uh-huh. I came back to the Netherlands, uh, they weren't on that same level with the meal prepping. Uh, of course, in the Netherlands, everybody eats for breakfast and lunch cool and they don't eat warm. So they weren't into the meal prep company, but I saw there was a lot of uh, need for it, right? Like a lot of athletes weren't like 
couldn't figure out where to get their meal prepping uh, meal prep from. Yeah. And that's how I started it with my brother, a fit life company. We started this uh, meal prep company. It was a very local first, just in our city. And then we expanded to like Amsterdam, Rotterdam. And we just expanded like through the whole Netherlands within like two months. Wow. And from one kitchen, we expanded to four kitchens. And that's how we started our fit life company restaurant. We started four other restaurants, vegan bar Amsterdam and many more. Like we just became the restaurant kingpins in Amsterdam, like out of Good the blue. You. It was crazy. It was crazy. God, you guys are and, wheeling uh, and dealing. This is crazy. You guys have oh, really yeah. done a lot in your year and a half to be so productive. Yeah, yeah. No, you. yeah. It, it just went so fast. And uh, but yeah, of course, like our heart is still at wrestling. And coming back in this way, we love it a lot. Uh, but of course, like if everything would have happened, everything would have went well with WWE. We saw ourselves still wrestling for WWE, right? Yeah. I came back after hurting my bicep. I rehabbed it in three and a half months, like wow. in 14 weeks. I rehabbed the full torn bicep. And uh, it was a double incision bicep I repaired it. it did, like usually that's eight months of rehab. Ooh. I did it in three and a half months. And I went back actually to the WWE office. And I told them, I'm ready to go again. And they just cut us off and said, no. And I said, we just said, like, what do you mean, right? Uh, I'm just going to say it here, right? Like, we shook hands on something pretty big. And yeah. they wa didn't want to follow it up anymore after I got hurt and the pandemic started. So that's also one of the reasons why me and Sonny said, hey, we're going to go home, right? We decided together we're going to go home and do our things, man, because we're people that if you make a promise and you shake hands, you have to act on it and you have to, you know, come your promises. Yeah. Like uh, come after your promises. And once we feel like somebody doesn't do that, we cut you off right away. That's how we are. Yeah. With friends, with family, <laughs> with business. That's how we are. Sure. And yeah. we shook hands. Like, I don't know, like with a former somebody in the office, you probably know him. Uh, and, that guy got left go, let go. Uh, but uh, yeah, we went through some shit with him, right? Uh, he, uh, he made a lot of promises to us and they didn't relive it. So we just felt like, hey, we're gonna go home and uh, we're done, man, we're done. So it was not a very difficult decision for you guys to come to, to decide to, to pack things up. No, it just, really when uh, me and Zim, when we first started wrestling in WWE, like training, we, we came from successful backgrounds. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't yeah. like, it was our savior. You know what I mean? Like, it was something we wanted to do. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys like us get heat about it. Oh, they didn't come from the Indies. They don't respect the business. No, we, re we respect whatever we do. If we're devoting ourselves, moving from Canada, he's moving from Amsterdam to America, away from our families, and learning a new craft from scratch, I don't know what else respect can we do. Yeah. You know, like, we started our lives again and we fully went into that business and said, Hey man, we're going to be the best we can. And that's what we did, you know, and we respected everyone we came across. We thank, I still thank everybody that helped us on our, in our path. But uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're very disciplined in the way. And I'd say uh, respect oriented when like, I, I didn't even mention it, but because then we got into it. If, we agree on something and we sh my handshake is my bond. I do any deal in my in my life, whether it's real estate or anything, if I shake hands with somebody, that's my bond. And if and if the both parties or some party tries to flop out of it, that doesn't sit right with me. And the Zims is that's why we get along so well, because we have the same morals and values in life. And that was one of those things where we're just like, okay, there's no ill will, no hard feelings. We just said, Okay, that that's your guys' decision. Well, this is our decision. Yeah. Right. Most yeah. people would be like, no, no, just stay with the company and take what you get. No, no, that we don't need that. We yeah. do. We do it our way or it's not. It doesn't work, you know, because we've yeah. shown our respect where we moved and learned the craft, did whatever. We never said no to nothing. If Zim was 300, and, I think, 40 pounds at the time and somebody asked him to take a uh, suplex from a ladder, he didn't say it twice. He just said, OK, let's do it. Oh, we yeah. like them with anything. Getting hit by chairs, no problem. You always want to put us through table. I went through a table every week for like four months. Yeah. I said, no, I liked it. I enjoyed it. But it's because I because whatever we do, we try to do it the best we can. And it, that's that's just who we are. But at the same time, we we expect the same in return. 
if we and it wasn't something that we didn't agree on we agreed on something and they backed out of it mm-hmm. for whatever their reasons are and we just said okay it's all good we opted out right and it just I, in a way it's this it's it takes it takes guts you know what I mean I like that like saying hey man don't worry about it in the middle of a pandemic quitting your job right it's just yeah. like uh, but we're confident we we can do whatever we want like I can wrestle tomorrow I can I can become a I can't become a doctor probably that's probably overshooting it but and I can do pretty much you're still young you might right? be able to who knows I, we can do pretty much anything we put our mind to so it's like yeah. why waste it? what we're not going to waste our time doing something that we're unhappy yeah you know like yeah. in, a, in a situation like we love wrestling you know we want to do wrestling like we love wrestling but like we want to make it like so it's we're happy you can, nothing's worse than going to going to the ring and you're unhappy that's, like, that's yeah. the worst that you get hurt you're gonna hurt somebody it just it doesn't make yeah. sense a lot of people do it you know no not knocking anybody a lot of people do it but it's just it doesn't sit right with us you know so yeah. and as you can call us young and wise or you can call us young and dumb but that's who we are you yeah. know yeah so what i mean for you guys when you guys got together you guys both got signed really young. How did you guys become a tag team? What was sort of the origin stories of getting you guys together? Honestly, I, I believe it was all Hunter's idea, right? It was Hunter and uh, he, I, I was at the performance center about four to five months before Zim was. And then as soon as we came in, he came in, I looked at him like, man, he looks just like me. <laughs> right and and this is before they even like said hey you guys gonna be a tag team we just started hanging out together like mm. every day you know like because <laughs> we didn't ha- i didn't have any family there he definitely that he barely knew english you know he just yeah. and he just we just and, and i understood every word he said you know where normal people they yeah. look at him like what what did he say and, <laughs> and, and, and everyone, everyone called him jism right yeah and yeah. i was a, i think i was the only one that said his actual name is gazim guys come on Right. Right. <laughs> right. And, right. And we connected and uh, and then further further on we we uh, got an apartment together, we started living together and yeah, it was just like I honestly like I'll say this on on record like I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't if Zim wasn't there. Yeah. I would have just Same. I would have left a long time ago. And I would have said, "Hey man, that, yeah. it's all good." But we got a I'm lot going back of home. Shit in the because like Sunny said, we came from different backgrounds and everybody looked at us like we're just there to steal money, right? Like you're there, you're here just for the WWE for the money. Like you're not a wrestler. Why am I just, you, we have, we've been wrestling for 10 years on the indie bing halls. Like we've been giving our whole bodies. You guys are just here like to make money. Like everybody, like people don't know it because we didn't complain about it That's because so we can crazy. take a lot of shit. Yeah, we can take a lot of shit. Of course, I respect the people who did their thing in wrestling before WWE, like on the indies. But like where we come from, you know, we come from backgrounds like where wrestling just isn't that big. Like we, he grew up in a wrestling family. I grew up in a fight boxing family. So yeah. I, I actually became a professional MMA fighter at 17. Yeah. And people just don't know how much we left behind to go actually sign with WWE and go wrestle for WWE, go to the performance center. Like I never even told anybody in the Netherlands like what we went through in the performance center. Like people thought we were getting paid like hundreds of thousands of dollars, like just being in a phone center. I made more money at 17 from MMA sponsorship deals than I made in the WWE performance center. I had led money behind. I left my family behind just because like it was an exciting adventure. Like I thought it was an exciting adventure for me, like to go to WWE. Right. And we really stuck out there, like just because we were together. Right. Like if we weren't there together, man, I think, I think I couldn't do it, man. I think I would have left a long time ago. Like, we, like, uh, my uh, my father, he didn't talk to me for about six months because I made the decision to go to the WWE. Stop. You know I mean? Why did he not for, like it? For, for so no the the thing was I was at amateur wrestling and freestyle. I was I made my first national team at 13 years old. You know what I mean? So I was representing Canada all over the world, yeah. and I had just taken a world uh, bronze medal at the junior worlds in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, in 2013 before I signed, and. I had just medaled at Pan Am Games. So I was a I was a medal hopeful in Rio, you know, and mm-hmm. just being on the Olympic team. And that had because we have our own wrestling club here in Abbotsford, and like that's what we do. We teach wrestling. And uh and um he was he, it was his life's work on working on me, right? And I decided to just sign a contract and go to Florida. 
right? So he didn't he didn't speak to me for like six months. Wow. And people don't realize that. They thought, oh, these guys are just here stealing money, like Zim just said. No, we actually wanted to do it. You know, we were we had careers, we had yeah. paths, you know, like and we left those we abruptly left those paths to start a totally new venture that we didn't know if we're gonna make it, if we're gonna make any money, or even if we're gonna like it. But we just liked the wrestling part of it and we we enjoyed it. And then that's why when me and him got together, we clicked and it was just that that brotherhood, it was just it, it's uh I can't even put a word on it because it was just such something so beautiful and pure. You know what I mean? It's the same way now. Like I don't think Zim like has ever ever doubted any decision I've made. You know, he always puts me in the front and says, hey, just figure it out. You know what I mean? And he's so, and I'm the same way. Like, we're so confident in each other's decisions that we will blindly support each other, no matter yeah. what it is in life. You know, That's so. That's rare. And yeah, exactly. Like, tag team, some some of them say, oh, you guys will grow. I remember all the old timers that you, when they see us, you guys are together all the time. You guys will go grow apart. <laughs> you guys are going to hate each other. No, we like, we don't. We love each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's my brother. I never had, right? So, and uh, like it was uh, the the fact that we stuck together, and that's what made it beautiful for me. Otherwise, honestly, I would have I would have left a long time ago. 